Hey everyone, and welcome to our full video review for the Gigabyte Aero 14. To kick things off, let's go over the specs of the device, starting off with the CPU. It has the Intel i7-6700HQ processor. The GPU inside is an NVIDIA GTX 1060 with 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. Memory inside is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2400 megahertz. There is a 512 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD. It has built-in gigabit Ethernet LAN with integrated wireless 802.11 with A, B, G, and N wireless and Bluetooth 4.1. It has a Lie Polymer battery with 94.24 watt hours and an AC adapter with 150 watts of power. It has a one megapixel built-in HD digital camera above the 14 inch QHD IPS anti-glare matte type screen at the resolution rate of 2560 by 1440. On the left-hand side of the device, it has a Kensington lock, HDMI port, USB 3.0 port, combo headphone microphone port, and an SD card reader. On the right-hand side, there's a USB Type-C port, a mini display port, two USB 3.0 ports, and the AC adapter power port. The keyboard is solid with only a tiny amount of flex while typing with hard pressure. The buttons are tactile and feel newer and better than the past Gigabyte models we've reviewed. The touchpad is an all-in-one unit that has the right and left click buttons built in at the bottom, and the pad has nice response and ease of use with a nice matte finish. The IPS display looks good from all viewing angles, and the plane of the screen opens up to a full 180 degrees. Included with the Aero 14 is a driver CD, user manual, and warranty information, the power cables for the device, and a USB to Ethernet port cable. The battery life of the Aero with power saver on and 50% screen brightness will result in over six hours of use time running basic tasks. The weight of the laptop alone is just over four pounds. And if you want to bring along the power cables, the total weight is around 5.45 pounds. As for doing our audio test to check out the fan noise while under gaming loads up towards the front of the device where you sit, we had decibel readings of around 48. Up in front of the laptop, we had our highest rating at 58 decibels. And as for our final reading, we saw 56 decibels because the fans don't exactly exit their heat out the back. They go up across the screen at the back of the keyboard. Looking at it with our heat gun, we can see that the heat builds at the back where the fans disperse their heat. The keyboard stays at reasonable temperatures with most of the heat in the middle, but nothing hot to the touch. And then at the back of the device, you can see a little bit of heat forms back here, but not as much as on the previous screen at the top as the heat is not dispersed out the back of this device. Taking a look at our benchmark test, first thing we started off with was with Firestrike. It scored 9,577, which is better than 70% of all laptops that have run this test, which is pretty good. Next, we ran Cinebench with an OpenGL score of 97 FPS and our CB was 657. You can see how the CPU stacks up on the left-hand side of the screen. Next, we ran Crystal Disk to get a read and write speed for our solid state drive that is inside. It read at 511.6 and it wrote at 438.5. As for our real-world tests, we started things off with Gears of War 4. And like for all of our other tests, we left the device in its native resolution. And for a 2K monitor, a 1060 will be challenged definitely by this resolution, so numbers might seem a little bit lower. You could obviously adjust the resolution down to the game that you wanted to play it at, but we're gonna run it at its native resolution, so expect slightly lower numbers. Running Gears of War 4 on medium, high, and ultra, we saw FPS ratings of 64, 57, and 44. The GPU's temperature while testing was at 75 degrees Celsius, and the CPU's temperature was at 78 degrees. Next, we ran GTA 5 all on high settings. First, we ran it just normally on high with nothing else. It ran at 58 FPS. Next, we ran it with the advanced settings on and ran it at 46 FPS. And then finally, we decided to turn the advanced settings off and added MSAA at times 4, and it ran at 55 FPS. The GPU's temperature was at 75 degrees, and the CPU's temperature was at 78 degrees. Our third test was Rise of the Tomb Raider. We ran it on high with FXAA, SMAA, and SSAA at times two. It ran at 49, 47, and 36 FPS. The GPU's temperature was at 79 degrees Celsius while testing, and the CPU was at 80 degrees. And for our final test, we ran Dirt Rally on high with MSAA at times two, four, and eight. 
we had readings of 71 FPS for both times two and times four. And then on times eight, we had 59 FPS. The GPU's temperature was at 79 degrees Celsius and the CPU's temperature was at 80 degrees Celsius. If you're looking to put a personal touch on your machine, be sure to check out our extensive customization options before checkout, including upgrades available to RAM, storage, cooling, overclocking, custom paint, hydro and graphic wraps, laser etching, and much, much more. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of the specific BIOS menu screens, make sure you pause the video on any of the ones you'd like to see to view it closer. If not, be sure to check out our product link in the description or leave any comments down below if you have a question for us here at Exotic PC. I've been Andrew, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for future product overviews and reviews.